episode of without a voice let's go ahead and load so this is our here we go so they so Cassidy just invited Elowen into her home is where we last left off it's quite spacious you live here alone that's right It's not so bad. I don't have anyone to tell me what to do or where to go. I have a freedom now that I'd never known before. Perhaps, but sometimes I believe that being tied down to something is easier. If you don't realize you're being strangled, it's just a pleasant, lightheaded feeling. Elowen, what you saying, girl? Hmm? I don't really understand. It's all right if you don't. Ellen walks slowly from one part of the room to the next, her fingertips ghosting over every surface. She looked to be seeking the essence of each object, taking in every minute flaw and deciphering its true nature. Cassidy wondered what Ellen might discover about her if only she allowed it. If only she dared. It was unbearably quiet. Just then, Ellen came across the book Cassidy had finished reading. Oh, that's a book my brother sent to me. I get so fright frightfully bored here that these books have become my sanctuary. I'm expecting a new shipment soon. Your brother. Elowen was silent for a time, digesting, digesting the new information. And then her eyes fell on the half-finished letter, haphazardly placed next to the book. Cassidy followed her gaze, eyes wide. She leapt forward to snatch the letter away. How much had the other woman seen? Girl, she just glanced at it. She colored in mortification. Your brother is far away from here. Yes. It is beautiful, the place, is it beautiful, the place where you once both lived? I have not once seen its equal. More beautiful than this cottage prison of yours. Cassidy could not hide her surprise at Elowen's poisonous choice of words, nor could she hide her sudden tears. She dried her tears delicately, but with determination. Now is not the time for tears. It's okay, girl. Cry if you need to. Things are complicated. It is not as clear-cut as you seem to believe. Undoubtedly, the affairs of men oft are. However, all that I need to know is that he is there and you are here. That he is responsible for that difference can be inferred quite easily. fast reader to be able to jump to such conclusions so swiftly. I am not happy here, Elowen. Can you say that truly, with an unclouded heart? Elowen peered into Cassidy's eyes, their gazes held like two magnets, pulling each other in closer and closer still. Yet Cassidy could not do it. She could not look Elowen in the eye and tell an untruth. Elowen looked to the window. It has gotten dark. Oh my, how rude of me. I have not offered you tea or any refreshment. Do not trouble yourself on my account. I must away. I did not mean to impose for so long. You are hardly in, in position. In an imposition. You are kind and good. Cassidy's face lit up. Kind and good things do not survive long in a world such as ours. And just as quickly as it had come, the sudden rush of delight left her. Way to kill 
<laughs> Way to kill the moment, Alwyn. Bowing her head, the other woman was out the door and gone, leaving hurt and confusion in her wake. Pretty. When she looked out the window to glimpse the same view that Elwyn had just beheld, Cassidy, what Cassidy saw before her was a bleak uncertainty. Without wisdom or experience, storms shall ill-weathered be. But when you are nearby, dear one, no storms can bother me. Are these actual poems from something? I don't know. I don't know. To my dear Alexander, the exiled princess paused on the very first line of her letter. Is it too familiar? Will he dislike it? The brother of her memory was a kind boy, but rather stiff, particularly mindful of decorum. Following the events of the previous evening, Cassie fell, felt compelled to rewrite her half-finished letter. You only had like, oh, okay. I see, she's rewriting it. I was like, you only have his name. The break time. Mm, honesty, be genuine. Oh, that's not what I meant. Oh, maybe I misunderstood that, <laughs> probably. Not that Alexander would, will care either way. I'm sure he's too busy to even read my letters, though. Oh, okay. Still, I want him to know how I spend my days. I feel less alone when I read his letters. And if mine can ease his spirits, then it's a worthwhile endeavor. Somehow, even after rewriting the letter, Cassidy was not confident about its contents. I hope this letter finds you well, dear brother. My day remains unchanged. Every morning, I wake up and make myself breakfast and a cup of tea. I greatly enjoy the tea leaves that you sent last. After breakfast, I read and practice my embroidery. You will, we will perhaps not be surprised to know that my skill with the needle has not much improved. Is this interesting enough? She had not talked much of Elowen, not wanting to confuse her brother with, with tell of a woman she, he had never met. In fact, upon a quick reread, she realized that she had not mentioned Elowen in her letter at all. It's better this way, I think. When Cassidy looked out the window, she realized the sun had started to set. It's been a whole other day already. Oh dear, was I revising for so long? Silly me. She folded up her letter and placed it in an envelope, sealing it with the royal wax seal she was given. She stood and stretched her arms above her head. I have hardly moved at all. I have hardly moved all day. This is no good. Cassidy walked to the front of the cottage where she normally left her letters halfway, halfway beneath the door for an agent to collect. She had just stuffed her letter under the door when, Princess, Cassidy's blood ran cold for just a moment. Yet soon she realized he was addressing her and relaxed. You surprised me, Elowen. She spoke to the other woman through the half-open window at the front of the cottage. I am no princess, you know. Is that so? You seem like one to me. Cassidy was not sure how to respond to that sentiment. Have I casually let slip that I was a princess? I did not realize that I still behaved in the manner of one. Takes an exiled princess to know one? <laughs> oh no. Lifelong habits cannot so soon be discarded, it seems. There is an envelope under the door. Oh yes, do leave it there. It's outgoing. Outgoing? Ellen paused for a long while, but said no more on the subject. May I come in? Of course, I am so sorry. I should have invited you sooner. I was so taken aback, you see. I did not mean to surprise you so. It's all right, a happy surprise. I am so glad to see you. She opened the door and ushered Elowen inside. Good manners, good manners. This time Cassidy did not forget her manners. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. She quickly flew into the kitchen to make get, to make her guests some tea. Pull out the crackers, pull out the crackers. She'd set aside for just, for just such an occasion. Ellen politely sipped the tea, but did not touch the crackers. 
She's gluten free. Hmm. Hmm. Wonder. Let's not. Let's not assume. I wonder why she does not eat. Perhaps they're. They are. Uh, perhaps these are not to her taste. It seems a waste when I saved these crackers purposely in order to be a good hostess when next she came. Though she was confused, Cassidy quietly ate a cracker or two before putting the tray away. The women talked pleasantries for some time, though it became rather apparent that Elowen's attention lay elsewhere. Is everything quite all right? Why do you ask? You seem somewhat reserved. Da -da 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 -da. That is more than usual. <laughs> that letter. Hmm? You said it was outgoing. Is that the letter you wrote to your brother? Oh, yes. If I leave the letters there, someone will come collect it. Someone? How can that be? You do not go into town to have your mail delivered. She was at a loss as to how to explain. Cassidy herself knew that her situation was extraordinary. You see, though I live alone, I am well taken care of. My brother provides everything. Every fortnight or so, his agents deliver food and supplies to me. Someone is around to collect my outgoing letters once or twice a day. I only ever send my brother letters, of course. I was not wrong when I said this place was like a jail. Did her eyes change? Why do you live here alone when he clearly has enough resources to take care of you? Cassidy shifted uncomfortably in her seat. Elowen's eyes seemed not to look at her so much as born to her soul. Cassidy felt judged and deemed unworthy, though she had not yet responded to Elo Elowen's inquiry. No matter how she phrased it in her head, it sounded awful. I am here for my own safety. I... She took a deep breath. When you called me princess earlier, you were not far off the mark. I once was a princess, though I am no longer. After my father, the king's death, I was to inherit the throne, but our barons and parliament voted no confidence. Worse, I was then handed trumped up charges for of treason. I very well could have been executed. Instead, my younger brother intervened on my behalf. So you are alive, in exile, but alive. The former princess surprised herself at the depth of her own feelings, at the desperation with which she tried to convince, especially herself, that this was for the best. How can you be so positive? What? You speak so fondly of your brother when he is the one who exiled you. You left... who left you here to rot in isolation. It's not like that, Elowen. What part of what I said is false? Tell me. I mean, it sounds like he didn't have a choice. It's... it's not that simple. It is not Alexander's fault. She found herself repeating her thoughts on the matter mechanically. Mechanically, think she only half believed, or I don't know, maybe he did have a choice. I don't know. We don't know yet. She had said all these things before, it seemed she no more believed them now. As a result of your dear Alexander's intervention, you were exiled, were you not? Who's to say he was not responsible for the unfavorable vote in the first place? Why would he do that? What would he have to gain? the throne probably <laughs> I know it seems unfair but I have come to but I have come to terms with it matters of court are never black and white I am lucky to have left the castle with my life I previously stated my belief that you are kind and good I have now revised my opinion you are a blind fool as I am mute you are blind together too blind altogether too blind to the selfish ways of the world. What is your meaning? It is nothing. Believe in your brother all you wish, but you cannot deny that there is truth to what I said. 
Elevin arose from her seat in one swift movement and then headed for the door. Good night, princess. I am princess no longer. Mock me not, I beg you. <laughs> Why are you so mean, Elowen? Just like that, she was gone. Disappeared into the dark. Aww. Cassidy wrapped her arms around her torso, hugging herself for comfort in the wake of Elowen's sudden, indignant anger. Feeling comfort none, the former princess squeezed her eyes shut. Oh, Elowen. Why? Pretty. There is a treasure that can't be bought, no matter how long it may be sought. It's some, it, it is something priceless yet free. I speak, of course, of an apology. Is this Elowen saying this? Isn't this her little icon when she talks? Well, guys, I know this is really short, but I'm gonna leave it here. Um, just cause I got kind of a busy day ahead. So, sorry for the shorter episode, but it's getting interesting. At least we finished another day, so that's good. Um, yeah, really curious, I want to know more about Alexander, hmm. I'm curious, like, did he, like, did he exile her to preserve her life? Because it might be one of those things where, you know, the law can't be, I don't know, can't be overruled or something. Like, she has to either be executed or exiled. Who knows? And Elowen, hmm. Why are you so mad, Elowen? I suppose we'll find out. But thank you guys for watching. Um, please leave a like and subscribe if you so desire. I would really appreciate it. Um, but whether or not you do, I hope that you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Love and blessings. <laughs>